Hello everyone, this is Frank from Apple One to One. Today we're going to go over some additions to our credit debit card transactions by month table. If you haven't seen how to create uh, this, there'll be a link to our previous video. The first thing we're going to do, you're going to add two columns, column E and column F. We're just going to call one the credit card budget and the other is going to be our over and under budget. In each month, if I opened all of these, you would see we would have a blank line for the detail. Down the bottom, in the blank area, I have a row for a budget that we're going to put in, and I have a gray line just as a demarcation. Rows 16 through 19 are additional templates that we can use for subsequent months to add some information. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to add a budget amount for each month. We're going to add rows below this blue line. So to get all 12 months, that's going to take us down to row 25. So what we would do is add a row below. Then you can highlight those two come over add rows below and then again highlight those and you can you know add them in increments until we get down to row 25 the other thing you'll notice is that in here we have I just put in budget now if you want to copy that down to the subsequent rows. All you do is put your pointer on that little yellow dot, drag it down, and it'll copy it right into there. In the credit card field, now this is a pop-up menu, and you'll notice you'll see the down arrow. If you look over to the right, I've added a choice of underscore credit card allowance. That would be just as a demarcation if you wanted to use it uh, as an additional notification that this is your budget line. But that's why I chose to put a fill in this row. The next column, D, I put this fill as black because I did want to inadvertently key in an amount in this field. I did, we don't want anybody keying anything in here. Credit card budget, over here, what we've done is We've made this currency, two decimals, and you're not going to have a negative budget, but I like to be consistent, so I have the negative numbers in parentheses in red, and we're going to use the thousand separators. Now, again, you can copy this formula or format down just by dragging that down, but let's say we're going to put in a budget amount that we want for each month and each month is going to be essentially the same budget so we're going to say that we're going to use five thousand dollars as as our budget amount all right notice we have a comma separator and then we'll get to this field in a minute click on it drag that down it puts five thousand dollars in our credit card budget amount for the month because we're going to do this for each month. In column F there is a formula so if you double click on it you'll see what the formula is and the formula is, is E14 right here minus the amount blank sum which is up here and that becomes important as we go up and we'll show you how as you add information in your credit card charges then this over under budget will calculate so once you have that formula in and again just to make sure what you're what you're going to key there is you're going to key e14 or equals e14 which is our budget amount minus the amount blank sum hit your check then you can come in and grab your yellow dot, drag it down. Now your formulas are all set. Okay, 
The reason I do this down here is so that now all we need to do is come over to the date field. We're going to put in the date, which is going to put it in the appropriate month. Before we do that, let's take a look at our date field format. This is saying it's automatic. We don't want it automatic. We want it to be date and time. The date you want it to be the month and century and year. Time, we don't want any time, so you just click on none. Now that that format is set, again, what you're going to do, grab onto that yellow dot, drag it down. Now if you look at down here, you'll notice the format is the same in all of the records we're going to use for each subsequent month. So now that we have that done, what you're going to do is just come in and put in 01 slash 01 slash 2024. And notice how it moved it up into January. So, then you're going to Continue on. 02, 01, 2024. 03, 01, 2024. All right, now if you look in each of the months, you'll see that we have our budget amount in there. And I'll show you in a little bit how we can sort this and the budget will be on top. So we have our budget in and we have a blank line in the month. Let's suppose that we have some standard charges that we want to book in each month. Phone, rent, car payment, internet, and let's say maybe cleaning services. So you're going to come down here and we're going to add rows. So you can highlight these. I want to make sure that our date field is defined. As you can see, date time, right? Just make sure that all of them are the same. They are. Our description, now you'll notice that the description, what I've done here is I've also created a pop-up menu. And I have items in there that you can choose rather than typing it in because we want consistency from month to month. Also, in the credit card field, you'll see that there are also a pop-up menu and I've loaded you know, several different credit cards. You would just put in whatever is pertinent to you. Next is the amount field. <clears throat> and again, we want currency, two decimal points, negative numbers in, in parentheses, and thousand separators, just for consistency. The, two, the last two columns, you're not going to key anything in. That's why I have that fill as black. So, just to... We're going to copy these down. And you can add a bunch. Then let's say the first one we want to do, let's, let's do phone. So we're going to come in here and we're going to do phone. So the credit card that we're going to pick on that is going to be our Wells Fargo because uh, let's say we want it to automatically come out of our debt. Now you'll notice it puts it up there because it's going to put it under the card. The amount that we're going to put in is $70. There's a couple of things you can do here. We can say, all right, so now let's, we want this to be replicated. So you can highlight it and say add a row below. So you don't have to redo all of that information. You just have, Now again, you can, once you come in here, you can drag that down, you see. So if you come in here and you replicate it, and do it again, we have January, 
February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Come over to the amount, drag it down. Come into your date, and again, just type in the date. See if you make a mistake here. Now, this is a good argument for um, creating another pop-up menu for your month and year. But it's it's up to you. You can do that if you want, and just like we wanted. So you could continue doing it this way, or you could come up in here and you say, "All right, so here's January." Uh, and we have the phone. So let's say we also wanted to put in rent on the same card. So all you would do is come over to the left, add a row below, come in here, do rent, and the amount that we'll put in is uh, 2265. Now, you could do this each month separately, or you could come down to the bottom here and do just what we did here and put it in ahead of time. Totally up to you. So, rent was one, phone was one, the, our car payment, and we're, all, we're using the same cards on those. So, if you come down, you say add a row below, and come in here and select car payment. Now, notice that what's happening is it's totaling regardless of the credit card you use. So if we add one, another one, let's say, just to show you, um, the Internet. So we're going to select Internet, and the credit card that we want to use is going to be our Visa. Notice it put in a separate line for the visa, break, and the internet is $95. The last one that we'll do is we'll, we'll and we'll do cleaning services. And we're going to use our MasterCard. And the amount will be 155. The total so far for January is $3,460. Our budget is $5,000 for the month. So you come over here, just make sure that the formula E3, which is this, the amount blank sum. So we're going to, you don't want the blank. Take that out, and you're going to click on that January. And so our $1,500, we are under budget. And you could continue on like that. Now, the other thing is we're going to say, oh, well, I really want my budget at the top. So you just click on this line anywhere and go to Organize, Sort, Groups, and you see how I have it set up is you're going to sort the first group by year, month, okay? And then you say group name. There you go. And then hit sort now. And you'll see that if you go even into the subsequent months, the blank is going to appear here, but then this will come to the top, and that's what you'll have. What's nice about doing this, and then as you minimize these, you can see your whole year. So here, you're going to click on your credit card budget, and you see the gear, and you hit sum. Over or under budget, again, click on it, hit the gear, sum. Now, when you minimize, you will see your totals for the year in a minimalist view. At that point, if you wanted, 
you could highlight your credit card budget amount over or under and then I'll just highlight the first four months as an example click on your chart pick one and you'll see a chart and even if you expand it it's not going to affect the chart any you'll see your chart where whatever it is you have your five thousand dollar budget and you're over or under by whatever that amount is it's a quick way if you want to use a chart if a couple of things we went over was we added a pop-up menu for our descriptions we added a pop-up menu for our credit card and we've added rows down the bottom so you could put in recurring charges ahead of time in each of the months we added our budget we added a calculation for over or under budget and it shows at our month summary line if you have any questions or comments please let me know and we'll talk to you soon